Hi, I'm going to show you a little trick here that's uh, pretty good for um, for using droppers and trailers on flies. A lot of people don't use droppers and trailers because they think, well, it's, it takes a lot of time to sit down the bank and and set up a trailer and a dropper or something. Maybe there's a big fish out there you can't catch, and by the time you get done putting everything on, the fish is gone. So you kind of avoid using trailers or droppers. The other reason that pe people avoid that is because they get a lot of messes. Uh, messes are usually caused by either poor casting or poor leaders and by changing your leaders and, and improving your casting you can get uh, to where a leader uh, using extended uh, leaders like droppers or trailers is, is relatively easy and you don't get many messes in it. I'm not going to show you um, uh, about leaders or anything like that right now uh, but I'm going to show you how to set up a dropper or a trailer. Now droppers, the difference between a dropper and a trailer of course is the trailer is usually an emerger or a second dry fly that is added to the dry fly that you're using and you're using that fly as a point fly and the point fly is is giving you the identification or location on the water where the where the um, uh, emerger would be because you're not going to see the emerger but that emerger would probably be a, a dry fly or be maybe an emerger that just uh, uh, floats in the film a little bit and that would be a, a, known as a trailer. Then a dropper of course is when you have a dry fly and beneath it you have an emerger that's uh, uh, actually beneath it. And you, most of these are, are beadhead nymphs or beadhead emergers that you would put just underneath a dry fly. You don't want that uh, that uh, bead head to be so heavy that it would pull your fly, dry fly down. So you're not trying to nymph with this setup. You're not trying to get the fly way down there or anything. You're just trying to drop it down just in the, in the first six inches of water where maybe the big fish are sipping on emergers and not taking uh, flies off the surface. So um, that's what you would be doing in this case. Um, first I'm going to show you a knot. Uh, that you can use to put your fly on all the time and a knot that you can make uh, uh, slip knots into your uh, uh, immer into your oh man, I'm missing this. Yeah, just, okay. start, just start over. I know. I'll, I'll cut it in. Not from the start. No, yeah, uh, just start that section over. Okay. This is what you would be using for your um, dropper or trailer. This particular knot is a slip knot, so that you can you can actually attach it to your lead fly in the bend of the hook easily and quickly. So the idea of this is you would set up your trailer or dropper ahead of time before going out. Like if you're going to be fishing caddis in the evening in the summertime uh, on the Akama here, you'd want to have a couple um, trailers and a couple droppers set up so that when you do see that big fish out there and he won't uh, accept your dry fly that you can take him with one or the other. Um, if you're out uh, during a mayfly hatch, you would set it up with a mayfly dropper or a mayfly emerger in the film. Um, so, you, But you can set these things up ahead of time and they're really slick to put on and off. It takes about 15-20 seconds to get uh, your dropper or trailer on and you're back to fishing. Um, and they're not hard to set up in advance. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can do that really, really easy. Uh, so this is uh, called a Duncan loop. It's the knot that I put all my flies on with and I build all my slip knots on my droppers and trailers with, again, a Duncan loop. I'll just pretend like this leader here uh, that we're going to use, be using here in a little bit, this maximum 15 thousandths of an inch leader um, that we're going to be using here in a little bit. I'm going to pretend like this is the eye of the hook, just so you can get uh, sort of a feel for that. Uh, so if this was the this hole here was the eye of the hook, you would put your um, leader through the eye of the hook. And then I take that fly and I actually hold it in my hands to get it out of the way of this knot. That's another another real advantage of using this uh, particular knot is that it is a slip knot. So when you pull it down on your fly, uh, it allows you to make this knot anywhere you want to on your leader as long as there isn't a... Um, a uh, wind knot or something in your leader that it would catch on uh, but if there are no wind knots in your leader you can make this knot way up here and then cinch it down on your fly so this allows you to keep your fly again out of the way and I tend to put my fly in my hand here like this to keep it completely in the way of the, of the knot I'm using I'm building so here we go with the Duncan loop uh, again the fly is down there I've got my tag end and my leader here and I'm, all I'm going to do is take this tag end and form a loop with it. I'm holding that with my thumb and forefinger so that you can um, uh, 
keep this loop easy to take your tag in through. And you just come around both the loop here and the main line, around both of those, and come back through the loop. Now all you need to do is do that three times. Obviously this is a little, little bit easier with this big uh, uh, thing I'm using with smaller leaders. It's, it takes a little bit longer, but uh, still basically the same thing. And then you take your tag in after you've come through that loop three times and pull it tight. Uh, this becomes basically a noose. And it's a slip knot so you can slip it right down onto your fly. And this, of course, this stuff is a little bit softer, so it's a little bit harder to slip down onto it, but you can see the idea of slipping this down to your fly. Once you get it down to your flies, you'll see when we switch over to the uh, uh, to the to the maxima here, you'll um, you'll have to cinch that up to your fly. Um, but I'm just showing you here how that Duncan loop works. And again, because it is a slip knot, that allows you to pull it out as well. And so you can pull it in or out. And you'll see how handy that is when I get when we get to setting up a dropper um, or a uh, trailer here in just a second. So let's get the. Uh, not undone now. You can cut this part out if you want. Mm -hmm. And because I've got to want to use the maxima here, I suppose I should have gotten two. Okay. I suppose I should have got two of these, and then I could have just set this aside and pull the other one out. But I wasn't smart enough for that. <laughs> okay. Now let's take uh, get rid of this and we're going to pull out some again some dark uh, material. This is that chameleon maxima. It's a really dark stiff uh, material. And I wouldn't be using this for a dropper or a trailer but again I want you to be able to see what's going on. So we have a white surface here. We have a couple big dark flies so that you can see those and then the leader itself. Here. So Maximo also, also has a lot of memory to it, but also straightens out real nice. So I'm going to straighten this out here so we can work with it. And this is how we would be putting our fly on. Again, this is what I just showed you here a minute ago. It's a Duncan loop. I'm going to take this through the eye of the fly. Obviously, this is a pretty large fly and larger leader than we'd be using, but then we just want to be able to see this. Remember I said you can keep your fly completely out of your way down here. Um, that's, I'm doing the same exact knot I just did a minute ago. Uh, so this is called the Duncan loop where you, you uh, have, you need about th three or four inches or more of tag end down here and you just create a loop with that tag end. Then you come around the main line and, and the loop and go through that loop three times. And if you need to use your teeth or something like that to pick up your leader, that's fine too. And you pull that this tight and you pull it down to your fly. Be careful not to pull it too hard if, you, if it isn't wet because it may burn your leader a little bit. You can put a little, um, you can douse it in some water or something like that if you need to. Or just take it nice and slow so you don't burn that leader. The last thing you need to do is watch this tag end set by watching... Uh, the knot to set by watching that tag in kind of move around a little bit and then you know the knot's done. At this point you could, uh, after you clip it off of course, after you clip off the tag in, you can uh, open this loop up if you wanted to. Say if you wanted this, and this worked work, work, work real well too, if you wanted this woolly bugger to have a lot of movement in the water like that, you, know, you could do that by simply getting in here and pulling this knot out. Now at this point, of course, this knot can be pulled out uh, a little bit. And this is good if you wanted to have your uh, fly to have a lot of action, like this streamer, if you were fishing this streamer. Notice how this fly has freedom to move around a lot more because it's on a loop. And also if a fish was to hit it real hard and this was underwater, the, the knot was underwater, it, it would act as a shock absorber too. So it's a great knot to use with streamers. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're, are talking about is putting your fly on using a Duncan loop. Now the th trick would be to uh, figure out how to do a dropper or a trailer from this point. Here is our lead fly. We're just again pretending here. Although you can have a second fly or a trailer behind a streamer and sometimes we do that where you have a uh, uh, this would be your lead fly and you'd run uh, a nymph beyond it and that's done sometimes uh, as a trailer system. 
But what we're doing here, this would be our, we're pretending that this is our lead fly, and then we're pretending that this is our emerger, that we'd be fishing as uh, a bead head emerger underneath our lead fly, or as an emerger in the film, or a second dry fly um, yeah, as a trailer just beyond our lead fly. And we're going to, I'll do it that way or not, cut. <laughs> what? I just thought of something that I might want to do. Okay. You want to tie might, that might one save on? Some time. Might just save some time by pretending this is our lead fly instead of pretending this one here. Now you can pull this knot out, and that's uh, something we do with with um, streamers and quite a bit, is you, you take this knot and pull it out a little bit and create a little loop. Um, and as you're fishing this thing, it gives this thing the freedom to move around a little bit, so you're going to have some freer action with the fly. And when you do hook a fish, when he hits it hard, you have a little bit of a shock absorber there, too, uh, to help you uh, uh, not lose the fish on the set of the hook. But uh, for right now, we're just going to imagine that this is our emerger. It would be either a bead head em uh, emerger that we might have as a uh, dropper underneath our dry fly, Again, not heavy enough to pull our dry fly down. Um, and it also uh, could be a trailer. A trailer would be an emerger in the film or a second smaller dry fly that you'd be using to catch those pickiest of fish out there. Um, so imagine that this is, is what we're going to use as a, um, as a dropper or trailer. Now underneath as a trailer, uh, or underneath as a dropper, you're really going to want to only be about six, seven, eight inches. Uh, again, you if you want that fly to get down to the bottom, you're going to have to do something else. This isn't designed to get a fly on the bottom. It's designed to take a picky fish who won't take your dry fly, and uh, but he's sipping just below the surface, and so you're putting a bead head emerger on here. But now we're going to make so we're going to make this thing about six to eight inches in length. And you can see I have, I'm all ready to make my Duncan loop here. And I can take the loop just like we put the fly on, take the loop and put it in my hand, grab the tag end, and uh, make a form a loop with it, come through that loop around the main line and the tag end, and through that loop three times. As leader is pretty stiff, sometimes a little difficult to do that, but it's also sometimes a little difficult to do with a limper uh, leader too. Now this time, when I'm forming this loop out here, I'm actually going to go through that loop four times, just because when I want to pull that loop out and, and take the dropper or, or uh, a trailer off, I'm going to have a bigger knot to grab a hold of. So when you're using smaller leaders, you, you make the lot a little bit bigger by doing a four loop. It doesn't make the knot stronger. Uh, it just makes the, the loop easier to, uh, to grab. So here I am putting it through for the fourth time. I could have left myself a little bit more tag in to do this easier with, but, but I didn't. Now we have a four loop Duncan loop. We're going to pull that uh, semi tight. And remember we had to, to suck this whole knot together and see the tag end move before our knot's complete, and we don't have anything to pull that down onto. So what you need to find is something like a, a nail knot tool or forceps, even a stick will work fine. Just something that's round, it doesn't have any sharp edges on it. Grab a hold of that, like that, pull it down until the tag end moves and the knot is cinched up. Then you can bring uh, this knot out like this, and we'll cut the tag end off of that. And now we have our dropper or our trailer all set up here. We have the, the fly here and we have the loop down here. So this would be something that would go into your pocket. You know, fishing shirts uh, have those two big pockets in the front. In one of those pockets you should have your, your uh, droppers, the little bead head emergers of whatever bug you're trying to imitate that day. And over here you might have your trailers, uh, little emergers or smaller dry flies that will be in the film. And again, you have your lead fly here. This is your lead fly that you're using. And so what you do when you want to throw a dropper or a trailer on is you reach in your pocket, you pull this out, you grab the tag in, or the loop, you pull it up into the bend of the hook, and you cast it out there. Um, 
this of course is the same thing you would do with your with your trailer or or dropper so um, the trailers you can make anywhere from say uh, 10 inches to uh, probably 16 inches something like that uh, if you get any bigger than that you're going to have trouble turning the second fly over and so you you can um, uh, turn the second fly over e easier so you don't want to make it too darn long. But you don't want to make it real short either or they'll see your lead fly at the same time they see your other offering. And so you got to, uh, but if in a dropper you're probably not going to go more than six or eight inches, probably about like that. And and it'll be sitting underneath there and hopefully that, that big fish that you're trying to catch will see the little emerger and take it and uh, you'll either see the fish take it or you'll see your lead fly go down in which case you would you would uh, set the hook and uh, be in business. Now it only takes maybe uh, uh, 10 minutes to do a couple of each to put into your pockets before you go out fishing and again it takes you about 15 seconds to throw one on. Uh, so that makes uh, droppers and trailers really easy to use and you're going to be using them more and because you're going to be using droppers and trailers more, you're going to be catching more fish and that's the whole name of the games. So.